So are you thinking about moving to Paso Robles, California? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of living in Paso Robles, California. So you're going to want to pay attention and stay till the very end because I'm going to share one of the best kept secrets of Paso Robles at the very end. So you're not going to want to miss that. I'm going to get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is about living in Paso Robles and the Central Coast, then hit the subscribe button below and tap that bell icon for notifications. So you'll be the first to know when I post information about Paso Robles and the California Central Coast. My name is Bruce Carson. I'm with Keller Williams Realty Central Coast. And I get calls and emails from people just like you every single day looking for help on making a move to the Paso Robles area. And I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to move in nine days or 90 days, just uh, give me a call, shoot me a text or an email. And uh, all my information is listed in the description below so I can help you make a smooth move to Paso Robles, California. <music> Okay, so Paso Robles, let's start with the pros. Right here, you see Paso Robles has beautiful scenery. You go outside, and Paso has vast hills. There's beautiful oak trees. There are wine uh, vineyards. As far as the eye can see, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. And even in the downtown area, uh, it's a nice uh, scenic place to be. So Paso Robles for sure is uh, has beautiful scenery. Number two pro for Paso Robles. We are right in the heart of wine country. Paso Robles is warm, so we get uh, some really good climate for wine. Uh, you'll see uh, vineyards all over the place. And Paso is really well known for uh, big, bold, robust red wines. Yes, they come up with whites and, and uh, rosés and everything in between. And uh, those are all really good too. But uh, the hot weather uh, during the summertime really produces some amazing, uh, big, bold red wines. So there's a lot of opportunities to go out uh, wine tasting in Paso Robles, and uh, lots and lots of fun wineries to go and enjoy. Please keep in mind that you don't have to be a drinker to enjoy wine country and wine tasting in general. So um, me personally, I love wine, but I don't drink wine when I go wine tasting. I like to be the uh, designated driver. I taste the wines and use a little spittoon there. Uh, so I'm safe uh, to drive, but um, I can still participate and enjoy the wine tasting process. Uh, and that's always welcome at all of the wineries, I'm sure. So pro number three for Paso Robles is it really does have a cool downtown, small town feel. Um, it's just a very quaint little town. The downtown area is very small. Uh, it looks older than it probably is, uh, but it's just kind of a nice homey feel when you get out there. I like to go to uh, Paso Robles, like, you know, on the weekends. Uh, it's a great time to enjoy like a, a dinner uh, evening out when the weather cools down. Or me personally, I like it early, early in the morning when there's barely one, anyone out, just people walking dogs and enjoying some coffee. But uh, very small town, uh, good, safe feeling. Which leads us into reason number four, why Paso Robles is a great place to live. There is a very low crime rate, rate in Paso Robles. Um, the Central Coast in general is a pretty safe place to be, but um, 
We're just really not at all used to watching our local news and hearing about violent crimes and, and all the crimes that we have kind of surrounding us because we're right in the center of the state. So we're in between San Francisco and LA, uh, north and south. And then to the east of us, we have Fresno and, and Bakersfield, um, Taft out there to the east. All of those places are just riddled with crime. So come here to Paso Robles if you want to take advantage of a very low crime rate. So next up for pros, for Paso Robles, it's proximity to the coast. So uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, you can, from Paso Robles, because it's up uh, in the northern part of San Luis Obispo County, you can head uh, westbound uh, on Highway 41, and you can go to Morro Bay. From Morro Bay, you can go up north and get into uh, Cayucas and Cambria. These are all very quaint, very uh, cool, low temperature, foggy uh, coastal climates. You also have access, just a short drive to Avila Beach, which we've talked about quite a bit, as well as Pismo Beach, and then all the way down uh, to the dunes in Oceano and Grover Beach. So proximity to the coast is huge, especially when it gets warm in uh, Paso Robles, and you wanna escape that heat, you can just get in the car, enjoy your air conditioning while you drive westbound to the coast, and go cool off on those hot days. And uh, another pro, I have to tell you, I'm a golfer. Uh, I love the outdoor and recreation of Paso Robles. So there are some really good golf courses in Paso Robles. As a golfer, I think it's kind of funny that we have to go to Paso in order to get good sand and good sand traps because the courses that are right along the coast have like dirt in the sand traps. It's kind of weird, but these guys import and have nice sand up in Paso Robles, really nice uh, courses, uh, Hunter Ranch, Paso Robles Country Club, uh, and then there's a, there's a couple more uh, sprinkled about Paso Robles. Uh, you can also get out and, uh, and ride bikes and enjoy hiking trails, and uh, a little river that's going through uh, is fun when the river is, uh, is running. So lots and lots of pros about Paso Robles. Now, unfortunately, we're going to move on to the cons because every town, no town is perfect and uh, everyone has their pros and cons. So let's get through the cons. I'm sorry to do it, but let's go for it. First con is uh, the cost of living. Uh, the Central Coast in general is uh, expensive uh, to live here, and uh, it's hard to afford, uh, you know, being a homeowner and living here on the coast. Uh, rent is high and uh, gas is expensive, so it is an expensive place to live. Uh, so I do encourage you to, you know, weigh your pros and cons before you make that move. Take a look at you know all of your bills and all of your costs, and make sure that you can't afford you know the happy lifestyle here that you want. Another con is there's a huge risk for drought. Last year in uh, 2022, our whole entire central coast got filled up with water. All of the lakes got full, and our immediate drought concerns went away. However, when you live in California and here on the coast, especially, uh, drought is always, always, always a concern. So even when our lakes are full and just got filled up from all the rain, we still want to pay attention to every single drop of water that we use and make sure that we conserve uh, and do our part to prevent that next drought. Because before the 2022 big rainy season, we were really low, like really, really close to uh, running out of water, which is a, a scary thing. So uh, thanks for participating and helping save water while you visit Paso Robles. Another con, uh, it is uh, a bummer that there's really limited public transportation 
um, all along the Central Coast. It has gotten better over the last couple of decades. You know, we do have some buses running up and down the coast, even from Santa Maria and up into Paso and um, all along. So we do have some, but it's very limited uh, public transportation. We don't have any subways. You know, we really don't have uh, the infrastructure for a lot of growth here on the Central Coast. So that's a bummer. Uh, if you're not a driver and you're trying to get around, it can be a little bit challenging. Which coupled with the lack of public transportation is traffic congestion. Generally speaking, on any given day when you're driving through Paso Robles, there's not going to be a whole bunch of traffic. But when we get to the weekends, um, during the especially like during the summertime, when the California State Fair is in Paso, and uh, people are coming flooding in on Highway 46 that goes to Highway 101 in Paso Robles. There are a lot of people that come over um, during the summertime from the east. So they're coming from the valley and coming over to Paso and then down into the beaches to cool down. And we do get some uh, traffic jams, traffic congestion in some areas in the Paso Robles area. But all in all, you know, we don't have a huge like commute problem, like a daily commute. Uh, it's more like a rush hour versus a rush or a rush minute versus a rush hour is what I meant to say. Uh, so it's uh, it's not too bad, but uh, it does happen. And eventually you're going to get caught uh, in some traffic. So next con for Paso Robles, uh, education. Uh, the education here is... Um, is okay. It's not uh, it's not the best education uh, opportunity that we have here uh, on the Central Coast. So we do find that some Paso people may opt to live in Paso and try to get their kids into another uh, local school district. Uh, Paso Robles is just not um, at the very tippy top of the Central Coast schools. Uh, Another con for Paso Robles is the, we do get extreme temperatures during the summertime. And of course, right when the Mid-State Fair gets here, it seems to be the hottest time of the year. And it's not unusual to get well into the 100 plus uh, zone uh, in Paso Robles. So it gets hot. Um, it does tend to cool down a little bit. It'll cool down at night and then warm up again. Uh, but those summer months, they get pretty toasty in Paso Robles. So you wanna be prepared for that and just be aware. So I always like make sure that I tell people that, especially if they're moving to uh, Paso and they say, hey, uh, it's January or November. It's awesome, I love it. I'm buying my house right now because I love this nice cool climate. Please don't be surprised, it does get very toasty in Paso Robles uh, by uh, summertime. Uh, so the last con, this is it, this is it. I'm sorry, it's been rough, uh, but we're getting through it here, um, is the job market. So we talked about the cost of living here in Paso Robles, and now we're gonna talk about the job market, and they really go uh, together why um, this is a, a challenge here on the coast. So there just aren't a lot of great jobs and there's there aren't a lot of really good paying jobs that uh, can justify, like for instance, a young person uh, just getting out of college. Um, people do have a hard time uh, getting by, like trying to uh, buy a home and uh, get a job that can make it affordable and comfortable to live here on the coast. So that's a challenge. We're all aware of it. And um, hopefully you can find yourself a good job or you don't need a job or you can work online and make some money uh, in other ways. So those are the pros and the cons of Paso Robles, California. Now I told you to hang in there until the very end and we're there now. 
So I'm going to share this one last slide, a really uh, good and not so well-known opportunity in uh, Paso Robles is some of the local wineries have wine caves. You can go for a tour uh, through the caves. It's just really, really cool. These underground caves are literally cool. They're underground to keep wine cool for storage. And it's really cool. You can go for tours uh, in Paso Robles in wine caves. And you can also uh, rent a little room like uh, like you see here. And, uh, you know, have an, an intimate uh, a party, dinner parties, a great venue for, uh, for weddings, uh, rehearsal dinners, and all of that. So come on out to Paso Robles, enjoy the great wine, chill out in the caves, enjoy your weather. And uh, as always, call, text, or email me, Bruce Carson Realtor, if there's anything that I can do to help you today.